Hello again, it's me, Jerry, and we're going to do a Messy Monday Thursday service for children. So we are going to do feet washing. And one of the things I'm going to do was, since it was Emily's birthday a couple of days ago, I am going to wash her feet and give her a foot spa. So she's going to have a nice bubbly foot wash and lovely olive vitamin E oil treatment on her feet and some pretty pink nail polish. So while I'm busy doing Emily's foot, st foot spa and doing feet washing, I would really like you to watch this story about the servant king who washed his disciples' feet. And after that, come back to see the finished product. The Servant King It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year, they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? <laughs> they were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right. Stinky feet. Now, the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty, with all those cows and horses everywhere. Oh, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt. But it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowliest servant. I am not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said tears filling his eyes. All of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was. But Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said. And Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Well, we hope that you enjoyed that lovely story about the servant king. And when we believe in Jesus, he cleans us from all our sins, all the things that we do wrong. But sometimes in life, we might walk into some things that are a little bit mucky. So he offered to only wash our feet. We didn't have to wash ourselves all again. So Emily just said to me, what did you say? Look, mom, I've got... Holy feet. <laughs> Emily says she's got holy feet now. So this is the finished product. She's got lovely, beautiful feet. And, and snow. After, yes, and some bubbles, which she said is snow. After this, we are going to make some 
flatbread, proper to traditional flatbread that Jesus would have had at his time. And we're going to look at the story of the Last Supper. So stay tuned. We'll see you soon. Everyone, it's Emily and Jerry, my mum, and today we're making Jewish flatbread that they made and that they traditional ones that they had when Jesus had went. the Last Supper. Yeah. So you need two cups of stone milled flour, which we have here, a third cup of water, and a third cup of olive oil, and some natural salt. So what we're going to do, and you also need a baking tray with some parchment paper or some baking paper, and then you need a board to knead your dough in, and then preheat your oven. So, Emily, you're going to help me? Yes. Yeah. Right, put all the flour into the bowl. All this. Yeah. Just put it in. All right, great. And this one. Right, so now we need to put our teaspoon of salt, right, and your olive oil, pour the olive oil in. Let's make sure it's all out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this together and then I want you to put bits of um, water in slowly. So get the water. The water's here, Emily. Right. Slowly. Yeah, so just dri drizzle a bit. Okay, great, that's enough. Now put that down. And also we need a fork. So we're just going to knead this all together. Can I do that? Yes. And we did wash our hands after the foot washing, so, so yes. That was my husband phoning. Life working from home. If daddy phones MBIM, will you answer it and go next door? Sure. And then right, can you put a little bit more water in? Just a little drizzle, like a drop. That much, maybe like one, one, one drop, then half a drop. So we're just going to knead this all together and make a lovely. And then, can you put the rest of the water in for mummy? Great. So this is really easy to make. Um, there's only four ingredients, um, which is absolutely great. Um, we're mixing it all together. And then we're going to make six dough balls, flatten them and put them into the oven and um, poke them with holes. And then basically allow them to cook for, for 8 to 15 minutes, but keep your eye on them. And while we wait, we would like you to watch the story of the Last Supper. The Story of Easter, The Last Supper. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms. <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. 
The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this, to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. I hope you enjoyed the story and the activities for today and that you engaged with the foot washing to um, identify with Jesus as the servant king and also engaged in making some traditional flatbread that Jesus would have shared in his last supper. So we have Emily's beautifully made flatbread right here with a cup of wine and a candle with three flames to represent God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we will have that tonight with our supper um, and celebrate Jesus, the Passover, and also take the bread, remember that he broke his body for us, take the wine, and remember that he shared us his blood shed his blood for us and we're going to commemorate that and as we do that this evening we'll be praying for our prime minister we will also be praying for everyone with coronavirus and the rest of the world um so yes do look on our youtube channel tomorrow or my facebook page or our abidor uh, deanery facebook page and we will be making resurrection gardens so do keep your eyes out and we would love to see your pictures of foot washing and flatbreads and tell us how you experienced your Monday Thursday. Great. See you soon. Bye bye.